Saki and Marco dishing out on the movies, and we're still on Hallmark Christmas week. Anybody made any Christmas cookies yet this year? I made my first one yesterday, a lemon bar, which I could really make any time of the year, but it's pretty sweet, maybe too much. But Well, I'll tell you, it wasn't lemony enough, surprisingly. I thought no. it was way too lemony. Ugh. But anyway, today we are doing the Christmas train. But first of all, before I start, I need to issue an erratum, which means I made an error. Kaylin, who recommended the movie Finding Father Christmas, is from Prospect Heights, Illinois, not Mount Prospect. I always get those mixed up. Sorry, Kaylin. And guess what, everybody? Today, this is actually a Hallmark movie that Marco has seen. And we'll explain why later. So, I'll begin. The next Hallmark Christmas movie I'm talking about is The Christmas Train. And it was released for this holiday season. And recommended by Shirley from Streetsboro, Ohio. The Christmas Train is based on the book of the same name by David Baldacci. It stars Dermot Moroni as writer Tom Langan, Kimberly Williams Paisley as Eleanor Carter, Danny Glover as Max Powers, and Joan Cusack as Agnes. Tom Langan is an experienced writer who worked many years as a war correspondent. Now he writes more mundane articles about closet space, for example. But this time, the writing project is personal. He wants to write a story about riding a train in honor of his late father <clears throat> who loved trains. He is also meeting his girlfriend, an actress, in L.A. at the end of the trip. They only see each other a couple times a year, which doesn't make for a very cohesive relationship. He meets several people on the train. John Kelly, a widower, whose wife just passed away. He carries a red hardbound copy of the Christmas Carol around with him, which he vows to read in honor of his late wife, who was a school teacher. Then there's a young couple, Steve and Julie, who plan to meet up with a minister and get married on the train. A psychic named Misty, a former train conductor named Mr. Higgins, who was forced to retire. Agnes, who rides the train often and seems to know everybody's business, but no one knows anything about her. And finally, Max Powers, a famous movie director who wants to make a movie about a train and accompanying him is his script doctor, Eleanor. The main storyline is really about Eleanor and Tom who used to work together and were romantically involved for six years. Then one day she left on a train and they never saw each other again. When Max Powers finds out about Tom Langan's writing experience, he wants Eleanor and Tom to collaborate and help him with this train movie. But Eleanor just wants to get off. According to her, quote, Tom Langan was the biggest mistake of my life. In the midst of their contentious reunion, there is a thief who has stolen Tom's pen, Max Powers' sunglasses, Eleanor's earrings, and other assorted items from other passengers. Do Tom and Eleanor get back together? And who is the thief? Since this is a Hallmark movie, it might be easy to answer at least one of those questions. And what about the couple who wants to get married on the train? Or, spoiler alert, how about the impending snowstorm? Will a little or maybe a big snow impact the trip? As Agnes, the woman who has been riding the train for at least 20 years, says, quote, it will all come out on the train, end quote. 
Now, Marco, what would you like to say about this movie? Your first and last Hallmark movie probably for the year. Oh, not forever, because I've you, ever, every year have to watch a Hallmark movie. Okay, so this movie, it I it's I don't like the way it looks at all. It looks very unattractive and dark and gloomy and all the I mean you can tell the red colors have been muted and I, like why would you do that when you're making a Christmas movie and all the people they're wearing these ugly clothes and and the music is is like really cutesy and stupid and and just really obnoxious and just always in the background like a like a, a a a killer elf that's on your shoulder and uh, but then the plot is fine and the the acting is is good I don't like the main guy he's really he's he's just like the boring uh protagonist he's very he's he's not a good actor and the main actress kind of rem she looks like Laura Flynn Boyle if she didn't get face surgery, <laughs> and so that was kind of weird seeing that. And Joan Cusack was really good, of course, and so was Danny Glover. He was I think he was the best part of the movie, obviously, and the writing was fine. There was. There was a lot of little cutesy, like, coincidences, like, the old people, they happen to have these, you know, they have these quotes that help you out, like, in this specific situation, like, oh, I remember this very specific quote, and it's going to help you get your lost love back, and I'm like, oh, I remember this, and I have this little thing to help you, and it's... Uh, it it wasn't horrible or bad. It, it was just fine. <laughs> and the ending was very surprising and very well, very well thought out. Okay, well, Marco, you have watched your first Hallmark movie. Because I don't think you have ever seen a Hallmark movie. No. So, well, the reason why I thought Marco would like this movie rather than some of the other Hallmark movies is because it was written by a man from male perspective, and it was based on a book by that man, and uh, I just thought some of the Hallmark movies can be a little... Rom over romantic and over girly. Are and they well, really the, girly? the thing about greeting cards is who buys the most greeting cards? Women. That has been a known fact for a million years. And all I can say is I thought he might like this one. And he has Danny Glover in it too. And Joan Cusack. And so he likes them. And, and they are good in this movie, like they are in. Well, Probably every movie they've ever made. So. I got off to a bad start because I I didn't watch this at first. At first, I watched this. Uh, well, it said it was the Christmas Tree on YouTube. I it was this weird movie with these two girls who run a catering company, mm. and there's this business guy, and he, of course he's the bad guy. Or no, wait, no, he's the love interest. He's, like, in between. And it was, it was really bad. I was like, oh, God, is this the Christmas train? Like, ugh. But then the Christmas train's a lot better than that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, there was one thing. I'll talk about it in spoilers. Some, some, an actor, he wasn't believable at all what he was supposed to be. Or what she was supposed to be. Whoever was supposed to be. I can't spoil it. Okay, so. well, is that it, Marco? 
I don't know. You want to discuss anything else? No, I was just going to say, talk about uh, what Shirley, who recommended this movie, had to say about it and what I was going to give it for my uh, review. So, okay, well, Shirley from Streetsboro, Ohio, who just retired from her government job and hasn't been able to watch many Hallmark movies, recommended this one because, she said, I love The Christmas Train. It had the usual romantic storyline, but also the suspense, too, and the ending was unexpected. I agree with Shirley. The movie was very pleasant, but the unexpected wrinkles along the way, like the snowstorm, for example, surprise and surprise ending added an extra dimension and turned it into a pretty good Christmas movie. So I will give it a dozen iced sugar cookies shaped like train cars with colored sugar and sprinkles on top. <laughs> How do you like that? And Marco, what would you rate it? I would rate it. I would rate it uh, three peanut butter cookies with a small glass of milk because it, although the, the plot and the characters and the, the writing tasted good, the color is dull and the music's bad and the setting, the setting, I mean, the setting should have been really cool. But ultimately, it was just, it, it wasn't done well at all. Well, and so that's the milk part, because milk is gross. <laughs> Bad. Well, you know, on, I don't know, I don't think on all of them, but some of these Hallmark movies, they interview different members of the cast who talk about making the movie, and they might t they might ask them a question about their personal lives, what's their famous, what's their favorite movie, or what's their favorite fa favorite Christmas co cookie, or what do they do with their family and Christmas. They're like personal little videos, and uh, I watched uh, one, and it was the uh, Dermot Maroney's uh, uh, video. And he said that the movie was made, wasn't totally made on a train. Sometimes, uh, for some of the scenes were, but it was, there was a set there, and it was mainly just the set. So, whatever. And I, I, you know, Dermot Maroney has been in a lot of movies, and so I don't know why he, he's so, uh, maybe just himself, very quiet and, there's not much emotion there. Maybe that's just the way way he what he's supposed to play. I don't know, but um, anyway. Spoilers. I just wanted to say that. Well, the character I was talking about is the old man who is supposed to be a thief. He doesn't look like a thief at all, and. I didn't believe that he was a thief at all. And it was just, it, it, he, he was not the right actor to choose for this part. Well, that was the, that was the a surprise that he was the thief. There were a lot of surprises. Well, we don't want to give them away because there's just not enough about, uh-oh. <clears throat> There's just not enough <laughs> to a Hallmark movie. There's just basic things. There's a lot more wrinkles and little subplots in this in movie than maybe others. <clears throat> Sorry, but um, yeah, I'll, we just we'll just talk about. We don't want to give anything else away. But uh, yeah, it was I was shocked, and. Uh, and you know, there's a, there's a lot of things. Uh, I'll just tell you. I won't tell you what what the real deal is. I'll just tell you what some of the other things like who is Agnes. That's one thing that Danny you know, Glover should have his own series. That, yeah. Anyway, who is who is Agnes? What's Max Powers really doing? Uh, what about this actress that? Um, uh, 
uh, Dermot Baroni or Tom Langdon is going to meet at the end of the trip. What about the couple? The act, get an acting coach. He's going to meet an acting coach to help him out. So, anyway, all, there's a lot of different... There is a snowstorm. I mean, there's nothing made up about that at all. There really is one. And how do they know? Because the retired conductor uh, has bad feeling about it and things happen with that. I mean, there's so many other things that happen in this movie. That's what makes it interesting. It's not just uh, Eleanor and Tom are going to get together and that's not the only thing, which usually in a Hallmark movie That's all it would be. It's almost all it would be. And that there's nothing wrong with that. People like that. I mean when you give somebody a greeting card, it has a greeting in there. Merry Christmas, happy holiday. Hope you have a uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, sorry about the loss of your. I mean, it's a greeting. So these Hallmark movies are an extension of the greeting, of the greeting that you send in a card. I wouldn't say so. Well, I would. Wow. So I think we're done with that. I want to thank Shirley for uh, suggesting the movie. We enjoyed watching it, and I hope next year that you'll be able to suggest another one. So, it was kind of reminiscent to that office episode, the way that uh, on Christmas Day they had to give all the presents to each other that they were going to give their relatives instead. Alright, we better not say anything else, so. And, you know, Max Powers, spoiler alert. <laughs> I'm, I can't I'm not, spoilers. I know, I was doing that on purpose. Max Powers, I never realized... His name is Max Powers. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway. I, 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 I never even knew his name through the whole movie. I just thought it was Danny Glover. Like I, well, they repeat it several times. Oh, you're the famous Max Powers and wants to make all those movies. Well, several people said that. Some, so. Most of their voices are really annoying and obnoxious. Okay, well, we have to end it now. So, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. I hope you enjoy Hallmark movies.